Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Join me in my prayer time. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time uh, praying and reading the Bible and reflecting on it. And I just invite you to join me. So at the beginning of my prayer time, I will light a candle. Nothing magical about lighting a candle. But it just helps for me to produce a sense of calm and of peace. And also just looking at the light reminds me that Jesus said he was the light of the world. And light represents hope, doesn't it? Hope in dark times. So as I sit and look at the candle, I just remember that God is always with me, wherever I go. And he's with me and with you right now, wherever you are. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, you've always spoken words of love, rebuke, forgiveness, wisdom and comfort to your children. You have led your people through desert and sunshine, springtime and storm, birth and death, joy and disaster. Supremely, you have spoken to us in and through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who is your perfect image. I come to you now, and I dare to enter your presence with bold hope and confidence because of that same Son, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Speak afresh and anew to me this day. Wash clean my soul. Give me humility, gentleness, patience and wisdom. Guide me along the right paths. Keep me safe. Make me alert and alive to the prompting of your spirit. Give me courage to obey and give me the joy of knowing your presence. I ask this in the name of your Son, my precious Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, at whose name all creation shall one day bow, and in whom I live and move and have my being. Amen. So I've heard it said that the Bible says, do not be afraid, and it says it 365 times. In other words, for every day of the year, there's a different verse of the Bible that says, don't be afraid. Now, I've heard this said several times. I don't actually know if it's true. So I'm going to embark on a project of trying to find every place in the Bible where it says, don't be afraid and read them and think about them. So I found the first one, which I'll share with you this morning, is from Genesis chapter 21. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. This is the 21st chapter. And what's happened so far is that Abraham has been promised a son. Now, remember, this is set thousands and thousands of years ago, and Abraham has been promised a son. But his wife, Sarah, is very old. She's past the age of having children. So this seems completely impossible. So Sarah says to Abraham, well, maybe you should sleep with your maidservant, Hagar, and have a son through her. So Abraham does. He sleeps with Hagar, and together they have a son, Ishmael. But that wasn't what God meant. God did actually mean for Sarah to have a son. He did actually mean for this impossible thing to happen. And eventually Sarah does become pregnant and she gives birth to a son, Isaac. Unfortunately, when Isaac is born, Sarah starts to look down on Hagar and she starts to get jealous of her and her son. And she forces Abraham to send his maidservant and his own son away. And that's the context of the verse. And I'll just read it to you. So it's Genesis chapter 21, and this is where Abraham sends Hagar away. Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she left and she wandered about in the desert. When the water was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes and she left him there to die. And she went and sat down opposite him a good way off because she said, I cannot look on the death of my child. 
And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. So this is the story of someone who had no status, someone who was completely unimportant. She was just a slave in a household. Her master slept with her. She had a son by her master, but despite that, she's just sent away, just rejected as someone, just like a piece of rubbish, sent away into the desert, sent away to die with just enough water and bread to last for a little while. And then the water and the bread run out and she's absolutely desperate. And she doesn't know what she's going to do. She doesn't know where her food is going to come from. And she cries out to God. And the Bible tells us that God hears. And the first thing that God says to Hagar is, do not be afraid. And time and time again, we see this in the Bible, that when people cry out to God, God hears and he listens because God is a God who loves and a God who cares and a God who provides. And his message to us is, do not be afraid. In the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, this is something that we need to hear. We are not alone. We are known and loved by a God who cares about us deeply and a God who wants to provide for us. And when we cry out to him, he will hear and he will also say to us, don't be afraid. Let's just take a moment to let the truth of that sink into our hearts. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. God bless you.